In this video, we'll explain how you can choose the best learning rate for your specific application. But first, do you remember what the learning rate was again? I recommend you pause the video for a second and think this through. The learning rate, also called alpha, basically tells us how big of a step the gradient descent algorithm takes. Concretely, we can explain this as follows. The larger alpha, the larger the step of the gradient descent algorithm. This gives us benefit that we might converge faster and in less steps. On the other side, if alpha is too large, we might never converge. And thus the gradient descent algorithm will fail to converge. Thus, the learning rate being too large might a reason that your gradient descent algorithm is not working correctly like we saw in the last video. So you might be thinking, okay, so we just take a very small value for alpha. Yes, for a sufficiently small learning rate, the value of j should always decrease on every iteration and we get a correct working algorithm. However, for a very small learning rate, the steps the algorithm will take will be very small. And thus the time until convergence can be very long. So it is important to find a good value for alpha that is neither too large, nor too small. So let us now look how we can do this. But first, if you liked the video so far, please consider subscribing. Now we will learn how to choose a good learning rate. Finding the best learning rate for gradient descent in linear regression involves experimenting with different learning rates and selecting the one that converges quickly to the minimum of the cost function. Here's a simple method to determine the optimal learning rate. Start with a range of learning rates. It's often beneficial to explore logarithmic scale since it can provide a good range for exploration. For example, 0.001 0.01, 0 0.1, and 1. Next, implement the gradient descent algorithm for linear regression using each learning rate in your range. Choose a maximum amount of iterations you want to perform and run gradient descent. After each iteration, record the value of the cost function. Now you can plot the cost function against the number of iterations for each learning rate. Concretely for our range of values, we get four plots, one for each learning rate in the range that we defined. They might look as follows. Now analyze these plots. If the learning rate is too small, convergence will be slow, and if it's too large, the algorithm may overshoot the minimum. Look out for the plot that converges to the minimum in the shortest number of iterations without oscillations or divergence. And voila! We now see that alpha equals to 0.1 gives us a good value for the learning rate. Keep in mind that this is a heuristic approach, and the optimal learning rate might depend on the specific dataset and problem. It's a good practice to experiment with different learning rates and monitor the convergence behavior to find the most suitable one for your particular scenario. Now that we have a general idea that the best learning rate for this specific problem will be around 0.1, we can even go one step further we can now redefine our range. The idea is to narrow down the range and pinpoint the learning rate that results in the fastest convergence without overshooting or oscillating. For example, we can now take a range of 0 0.03, 0 0.06, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. If we now do steps 1 up until step 3 again, we might find that alpha equal to 0 0.2 gives an even better value for the learning rate. So using this iterative process, we can try to pinpoint the optimal value of alpha for our specific problem. Now that we have a process to find a good value for the learning rate, let us look to some Python-like pseudocode to make things more clear. We start by defining a range of values that we want to try as our learning rate and we set a max number of iterations. We also make a list that keeps track of the value of j when we perform gradient descent because then we can lot the values of j in function of the number of iterations later on. Next, for each learning rate in the range, we perform gradient descent and record the cost after each iteration. Then finally, when we have done this for every learning rate, we can plot the cost in function of the amount of iterations for every learning rate and choose the learning rate that converges in the least amount of steps without oscillating or overshooting. 
So, now you know how to choose alpha. In the next video we will see a neat trick to improve gradient descent by scaling our features.